put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version and the link is in the description box. Resident Evil Retribution Mode Review. So we have Alice, the survivor and plague of Umbrella Corporation, and she is trapped in a a large umbrella facility which has quite a few zombies and she has to get out to the surface whilst trying to avoid being killed by the Red Queen. Yes, that does sound a lot like the first film. I guess it, it goes, you know, go figure. Yes, after a while, Anderson just, you know, started repeating himself. I, I think he's just trying to, like, you know... You, you know how if, if you maybe see a, a security camera, but you're really not sure anyone's looking, so you start, like, waving and doing weird things, just to see if... To, to get a response. I think that's what he's doing. I don't think he thinks that anybody's actually watching, especially the people throwing money at him for, for these... This film outgrows dread. That's... That's sad. That's... That's sad. So yes, we... we I suppose there is a little bit more plot to go into. Without spoiling anything, there is... Uh, there's basically a team going in to help Alice. And basically this team consists of more or less every, you know, major character from the games, at least, that I have any knowledge of, of that had, that, you know, hadn't already been, you know, in one of these movies. And I have not played the games very much, so I don't really know what these characters are like. And I wasn't told by the movie because there is really no characterization. Everyone is tough and good at killing. That's that's really that's the extent of characterization that goes. It doesn't even matter if it's a good guy or a bad guy. It doesn't matter who they're talking to, what situation they're in. Everybody is just a kick-ass killing machine. And, yeah, I, I don't even know if it's better to know, you know, to know the characters going in so you're like, oh, that's the... Or if that'll just make it, you know, all the more sad that they just, they're, they're so very bland. These, these characters could literally be just anybody. And it, it would not make any difference. Now, it's, it's, it's already been pointed out, and I myself have already pointed it out, that the, the actor playing Wesker is way too young. He's just, he does not have the gravitas, the, the years to, to, you know, come across as this really tough, you know, CEO type. I mean, this was the kid who rogue coma kissed in X-Men 1. I, I just... I just want you to think about that every time you you try to picture him as, as like, a, a tough character. And, it's, 
And it's not even, I don't have a problem with the actor. This is like when Wes Bentley, a great actor, was in Ghost Rider. And Wes Bentley is awesome, but he's not the son of the devil. It's just, there's, no, he's not. He doesn't look that tough, and he's way too young. There's just no, yeah, proper... So, so yeah, I suppose the... The, the movie literally opens in the same way that Afterlife, the fourth movie, did. The cliffhanger from the previous movie is, you know, which, which even when you, when you see the cliffhanger, you're like, how are they going to follow up on this? Come on, this is looking pretty ridiculous. And when they do follow up, they completely underdo it. It is just unbelievably unimpressive. The this movie also for some reason starts with a scene and an, an entire action scene literally rewound before I, I swear Paul W. S. Anderson does not think anyone is watching, so he's just doing stuff. He's he's rehashing entire plots from his own movies. It's not enough to rip off yes, the the you know, get get yourself a little little what's it called? Bingo card and and just try to notice, you know, he rips off several classic movies and, you know, the Dawn of the Dead remake. And it just yeah, the 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 entire action scene, rewound, then we get the, the, you know, at this point it's just really, we've, we've kind of gotten used to it. Alice does the, the talking to the camera, telling the viewer what has happened before, and then we actually do get the action scene just in, in regular I, I was sitting, I was literally sitting there thinking, oh, so I guess that's all we're going to see of the action scene. And then it played as it normally would. And I'm like, oh, they're going to cut to different angles. I don't think they did. They did, uh, as far as I could tell, they literally put both, people were complaining, and rightfully so, that Afterlife had so much slow motion that it would probably be too short for feature length if it if all the slow motion was sped up to, you know, just regular motion. This movie, he literally topped that by taking an action scene and showing it twice, you know, in, in just... in both directions, I guess. It's, it's like a five-year-old who just discovered editing and just like, ooh, I can make it go backwards, I can make it go forwards. So yes, in case anyone is wondering, the reason I did not get to this before, because I have indeed watched, I've watched all of these except for the first one in theaters, and yes, this one I also did not watch in theaters, and that is because it did not get a theatrical release in Denmark. Now, I realize these movies are awful, but I want my Mila Jovovich in 3D. Son of a... So anyway, the 3D I have not seen, but I can tell where they're, you know, throwing stuff at the camera and things like that, and I can imagine that it, it was probably fun to watch in 3D, like with Afterlife. Now, the... the, the it's, it's quite sad that the tagline of this is the ultimate battle begins. We're five movies in. It's it's only now beginning. And really when you when you think about the movie, it's it's quite questionable if the ultimate battle and then you have, you know, retribution. Well it's it's also been pointed out by other reviewers. Retribution in name only. There is no kind of yeah, it, it just doesn't really happen. Plot is unsurprisingly just, 
not present really I mean it's it's pretty sad but you could skip several of these movies and not really miss much of anything so yeah it yeah like like I said before it literally does pick up where the fourth one left off and well the 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 stuff brought up by the fourth one it doesn't really go anywhere. Kind of like how, you know, the stuff in the third one didn't really go anywhere in the fourth one. Yeah. I, I'm sure you can sense a pattern here as well. There are too many characters from the game in this. It's It kind of, you know, I, I mentioned before that they're bland. It also is just kind of they don't all have very many lines, like, I, I quite like Kevin Durand, and I'm, apparently other people thought he was really well cast as Barry Burton. He, yeah, he was kind of not, he did not have a lot of lines, which I'm not even sure that Leon did either. And also, I'm told that Leon and Ada Wong are, you know, really skilled in, in the games. Here, they're kind of just, yeah, they, they're not very impressive here. And part of it is, as Thales likes to point out, this is the Alice show, you know. Paul W.S. Paul w. S. Anderson married Mila Jovic, so yeah, she's gonna be the star. Just plain and simple. And everyone else is really just there to fail so that she can save the day. You, you really do have to wonder why there are other characters, other, other good guy characters. Now, this, this does follow up on some things that, you know, Afterlife... Th yeah, things that Afterlife kind of showed but didn't really do anything with the... Yeah, there's there's the scene of of the of you know Tokyo rainy streets and then this one zombie like you know what's it cape J pop J pop zombie attacks a businessman. Yeah, that comes back here because you know I guess it took Paul Lewis Anderson two years to come up with what he wanted to do with that character. He just liked the image. The the word repetitive is really applicable here. The over and over we see the the Red Queen. We see we see like this big display of you know okay this is where the the you know our good guys are and this is like an a you know layout of the of the surrounding area. Red Queen appears on the screen. And she says, you know, deploy biohazard. She, she says that a lot of times. I really hope the poor girl only had to say it once because it's just, there's, there's literally, I, I don't even think she says it differently each, each time. Maybe they did say it once. Maybe they were like, oh, did she already leave? Oh, crap. I guess we'll just use the same take five times. It, it, it just scratch out the other lines. We'll, we'll just do it like that. And yeah, literally, she just appears to say that and that's it. And the, the first time it happens, literally right after, our heroes actually say, Oh no, Red Queen sent, sent, sent zombies after us. We, we realize that. And it's just the kind of thing where, again, I think, Paul Douglas Anderson is trolling us at this point. Just, he, he, he's copy-pasting his own script. He's, he's like, okay, then this character says that line, then this other character says that same line, and literally, this could have been done so much better. If you did not show us Red Queen, but there was just like, you know, we, we see the layout, and then you just see, you know, Red Queen, you know, computing course of action, and then it cut back to our heroes, and then they hear something, and it's like, <gasps> Red Queen sent zombies after. You know, that would be so much more effective. Instead, we just have this redundant scene. It's not scary to see her. They even have her redo the, 
really cool line from the first one, which I'm not going to spoil here, and it's literally, it's just, yeah, he's, he's like, well, the, the first movie was actually, you know, not half bad, that, that was the one movie in this entire series that was, you know, it, you could ma maybe actually hold it to some kind of decent cinematic standard, so, what do you say I cut it into pieces and just glue this piece into here, this other piece into here, and it, it's not going to make sense because these movies don't make sense. It's just, yes, I, I know, I'm, I watch them for Naked Mila, that's, that's literally it, and that is something very notable about the movie, it knows its audience. Literally the first thing we see in this movie is a silhouette of the gorgeous Mila, and once she's done the whole, you know, once we've gotten the two replays of the, or the, yeah, the rewound and then the actual regular motion of the action scene, then we get naked Mila. You know, not, not literally like, yeah, she's, she's in the, the short little hospital gown skirt thing. I think that, I believe that there is more naked Mila in this one movie than in all the others combined. So, evidently, Paul W. Sanderson realized the horrible mistake he made in the fourth one with no Mila nudity. Now, yes, so, so literally, yeah, the first thing we see is the silhouette, then we see some slow-mo action, you know, preposterously done, and... Yeah, and, and soon after it does get into, you know, just, yeah, what you'd expect, these, these zombies chasing her, and I don't even quite know, it's like, like, like I just said, you know, Red Queen is like, okay, deploy biohazard, so she can, like, control the zombies now? Do they, do they just have, like, a bunch of cages where the zombies are just... Sitting there being being fed, presumably, just enough so they can keep alive, and then, you know, Red Queen can just open the cage and they'll they'll be there. There are a lot of zombies in this movie. And yeah, I I literally like I said, they're they're in a facility and they have to get out. So why are there so many so many zombies here? Again, it just this movie didn't have to make so little sense. The first movie basically made sense, a bit of the way at least. Second movie more or less made sense. Even the fourth movie didn't make this little sense. And why are they in a umbrella corporation facility? Well, because Paul W. S. Anderson wanted very different parts of the world in this one movie. So how else do you do that? But simulations. So yes, we get Tokyo, we get Moscow, and we get New York. And they're all simulated. With with zombies and Alice running around, so yeah, literally for a few minutes she'll be in one part of the world and, you know, suddenly we're in another part of the world, and they actually do kind of explain this, but it's it's the kind of thing where you can tell that really this whole thing started as Paul W. S. Anderson wants one movie with all of these different locations, so he just writes this entire concept around that one thing. It's really awkward. It's fanficy, really. It's like you could never actually see this happening, really, but clearly the writer just really wanted it to work out that way, so it somehow ends up that way. And I, I'm not going to give away exactly what the explanation is. I, I, I don't think I could utter it without my, my brain literally taking damage just, just from verbalizing the, the explanation. Now, the... So, so yes, like, like I said, no, no real plot, there's, there's really no progression here, it's just, yeah, there's not, not really anything that happens, it's, 
It's been described by other reviewers as, excuse me, very much like a video game. And that's very accurate. Literally, very early on, we're told, well, there is so and so much time before, you know, this all has to be dealt with, and then, yeah, they, the movie proceeds from there and going through these various locations and it's basically just a lot of action scenes and to, to be fair some of the action is pretty good and at times even kind of somewhat creative it, it's it's often like taken from other movies, like there's this entire chain thing, which if I recall turns up some in the trailers where, yeah, Milo's basically got a chain and she's swinging around her. I'm pretty sure that's basically just the, the you know, the Japanese schoolgirl from Kill Bill Volume 1 that they really, and again, I mean, Usually when you do see a ripoff, it's not as impressive as the original, but when Paul W. Anderson rips something off, he just makes it incredibly clear that he just really has no idea what made the original work. And... Boy, do I wish that was the worst of it, but I'm not going to give away what the worst of it is in, in this video, because it, it would be a spoiler. The... There is, yes, yes, the, the action is pretty interminable, and clearly, I mean, again, they, they knew who would be coming to watch the movie. There's really no, there's nothing else to this movie but action, and it's, you know, they, they do a couple of different things, at least. So, so that's nice. There, you know, you have the, the chain thing, you have some running around and gunning, you have, you know, groups of armed people shooting at each other, and you have just straight up unarmed fights. So, yeah, that, yeah, that, that works out pretty decently, and the effects tend to be pretty good. The th There are even a uh, few times where it gets scary and or tense, but the stuff doesn't particularly last. The score is quite good. This is something that's very hit and miss with Anderson's films. Sometimes it's just deafening and really doesn't fit the action, but here it, it fits quite well. It's yeah, you know, very... It's it's loud. I, I don't know music well. It's techno, I guess, or some some kind of... But, yeah, it, it tends to follow the action in the, the... You know, if the action is bombastic, the music will be bombastic, that kind of thing. So, yeah, that's that part, at least, he got well. There are some twists, and they're mainly surprising because they're really stupid. We again get a cliffhanger ending. I can't wait to see how he'll screw this one up, which I guess will be later this year, if we get a Danish release, that is. And, yeah, and another way this knows its audience is that we do indeed have babes in latex outfits, even fights between some babes in latex outfits. This brings in some... Actually, first I should go into... This is... This is inconsistent within itself, and given that, of course, it's also not going to be consistent with the rest of the series, but it really is quite impressive how little connection this has. It, it's, it is almost like these are just... 
the the you know the the B movie or really Z Z Z movie I guess depending on you know British or American the kind of Z movie where just you know let's just slap this name on you know let's let's call this a sequel to that other movie because that other movie is already out and this way we can maybe you know generate more of, of a viewing audience it's really sad that it feels so much like that given that Anderson has written all of these sure he didn't direct all of them he didn't direct two and three but he's written every last one of these I don't know how he manages to get it so very inconsistent he keeps writing himself into a corner and then he just kind of Deus Ex Machina himself out of it and it's it's really quite astonishing how yeah it's it's extremely clear that he literally only thinks of one of these at a time and he's literally just trying to make some kind of sense I, I would not be surprised if I found out that him writing one of these was actually some kind of elaborate you know, ritual probably involving a good amount of heavy duty drugs where like he has to write a new page every hour maybe or he's afraid that his head will explode and once he's written all of these pages then they have to be kind of just jumbled together in a random order and sent directly to again that or he's trolling now the there is again plenty of slow-mo and some of it very annoying we have the anderisms of either no setup leading to you know some kind of you know some something big happens without any kind of setup so it really doesn't have that much effect because of that or something is set up and then either the payoff is just nothing or it just kind of yeah it just either way it's very disappointing and it's it's something that he is quite accustomed to it, it, it it's a it's a trademark of his really at, at this point and yeah frankly near the end of the film I was literally thinking wait has there really been have we gotten a climax yet has there been like the big fight that's supposed to really finish it off kind of it just yeah now this This is literally only 82 minutes, if you don't count the end credits. With that, it's 91, but... Yeah, that, that really does tell you something. It's been noted by other reviewers that there's really... There's no real dialogue. It's, it's all filler. It's literally just action movie cliches, and not good ones at that. And again, I... He, he must have... He must have a very detailed list of action movie cliches especially dialogue wise and he literally just went through that copy pasted various ones into it you know you you have the one with the you know the the person driving up in a fast car opening the door and like what are you waiting for an invitation you know you've got you know someone says would you mind shooting and you know they say oh be, you know it would be my pleasure and that kind of thing. and if at least they would have that one character or two characters were these badass ones with the one liners but everyone's like that every every character that holds a gun in this is a badass and that's literally it. there's there are, there aren't even really any different levels of it. There's there's Alice and then there's everyone else. So yeah. Okay, I guess that does make for two different levels. The I 
suppose that more or less covers it. There are some nice visuals. It, Anderson is not completely untalented. He's just... He doesn't really realize where his strengths lie, or he doesn't care. This, of course, as you might know, brings Michelle Rodriguez back from the dead, much like Fast and the Furious, and... Yeah, it's... It, I expect that to be become a bit of a trademark for her from now on, and yes, the the way they do this, they the way they do that here is of course clones, and clones and simulations are thus brought up in this movie, and when you when when you bring up such such concepts in in a piece of fiction, you you should probably have some kind of some some themes of you know what what exactly does the you know what questions are raised by this? The simulation raises the question of how do we know what is real? Could what we perceive as reality, in fact, be a simulation? Are the people in the simulation do are are they like real people? And what exactly distinguishes them from us? With with cloning, you have do you know? Do they remember what you know? If if someone is cloned to an adult state from another adult. Do they remember anything from before they were cloned? Do you do you implant fake memories to convince them that they are actually someone else in case the clone needs to be used for something else? These these are interesting issues and the movie doesn't care in the least about them because it literally just brings up the stuff well the simulation is is to explain away the settings. The clones well, actually, yeah, there, there, again, there is, there is an explanation for it, but it's, again, just really... It's to service the, the, what, what they wanted to do in the film, which, again, is not interesting, and it's just, re really, when you see, there's, there's a scene in this where you see just a huge amount of clones, and and this is not the first time the series has shown us a just a mass amount of clones in one place. And I've now I'm now working on a theory that Umbrella Corporation is actually part of Aperture Science or the other way around because clearly they are both equally wasteful in in use of resources. And employee security. Now that I think about it, and I guess that pretty much covers it. Yeah, it's it's not that well paced. It the it, it kind of starts and stops, and it it takes a little bit to get going because again, literally the first thing we see is a rewound action scene, which. I guess on its face, it's 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 a decent concept and kind of visually it can be a bit interesting. But then they should have only showed it like that, or maybe they should have shown parts of it like that. Let's say they just took out a few pieces of that, rewound one, and then showed something else, rewound a little later, and then at some point you see the entire thing, like it's Alice trying to re remember what actually happened, and finally it all comes back to her. But showing the whole thing rewind, and then showing the whole thing play out, this only separated by a, you know, a couple of minutes of Alice literally just stating everything that happened in the other movies. Presumably for those playing the home game who may have forgotten some of the things 
that happened earlier in the series that are going to be completely ignored and forgotten in this movie. They're, they're not even really talked about. There's like, there's, there's a mention of one or two of these things, but yeah, overall there's, there's nothing. And the, the Amazing Atheist asked this question for, for Afterlife, and it bears repeating for retribution. Why are Umbrella Corporation still trying to experiment, still trying to do evil science? It, it really doesn't make sense. And some and people are going to say, oh, well, in this one it's the Red Queen. Who reactivated her? Why? And the whole thing with... Yeah, I'm going to get into that more in the, in the spoilers video, but... Yeah, it just, it, it wastes a lot of the audience's time, and even then it doesn't even reach 90 minutes without credits, and there aren't any, you know, mid- or post-credit scenes, and, yeah, it's just, you're going to forget it soon after. But while you're watching, you will have some fun watching it. Certainly, the effects are good, including practical effects. The, the makeup work on the zombies is quite good. I've reviewed other parts of this series. The links are in the description box. Please rate and comment. And hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.